Do you have tennis elbow caused by tennis or paddle or squash or pickleball? Maybe you got tennis elbow from rock climbing or working with your hands, like carpentry, working with a hammer. You have a pain right here on the lateral side of your elbow that comes and goes, comes and goes, but if it's been lingering for about a month and you're worried that it's not going to go away, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Lucas. I am a yoga teacher and a trainer, and in this video, I'll show you how to get rid of tennis elbow fast, and by fast, I mean in six months. Unfortunately, tennis elbow can commonly linger for one or even two years, so to speed things up, that means thinking still about six months. That's the bad news. The good news is there are some really great self-care techniques you can use to accelerate that process. Quick disclaimer, Tennis elbow for some people can be debilitating, can keep you from work and activities. In rare circumstances, you might even need surgery. Please work with a doctor. I'm not a doctor, I'm just a yoga teacher, but hopefully what I can share with you is helpful from an educational perspective. In this video, we'll talk about number one, the anatomy of tennis elbow, what's going on with this common extensor tendon out here. Number two, we'll talk about why racket sports, rock climbing, and maybe some things where you work with your hands can give you such a common propensity for this injury. And lastly, we'll talk about a self-care routine you can do at home. It takes just about five minutes per day and does not include cortisone shots or ibuprofen. Let's get started by looking at the anatomy. To understand the anatomy of this injury, take your hand in a C-shape, put your thumb on the inside and your index and middle finger on the outside. This bumpy protrusion on the outside, the lateral side of your elbow, is called your epicondyle, your lateral epicondyle. And on this bumpy protrusion, bony part of your elbow, there's a tendon that attaches there. Remember, muscles uh, attach to bones with a tendon, and the tendon that attaches right here is called your common extensor tendon. The common part means that it's not just one muscle, but actually six muscles in your forearm, they attach here. The extensor part is these muscles are all extensor muscles. They extend your wrist, they extend your fingers, and along with extends, extending those joints, they also brace. And this will be relevant here in just a moment. But the reason why this tendon is so prone to injury in racket sports and rock climbing will become apparent in just a moment. If you think about physics and leverage, with my wrist, my hand is not so long. So when I move my hand around, I don't have a whole lot of leverage. By adding a racket to my hand, you can see suddenly I have a lot more leverage. And when I try to keep that racket still and I try to brace against the ball, the tension in those extensor muscles, my fingers and my wrist, all the way up to that common extensor tendon, in fact, I can even feel that radiating now, is really, really profound. Normally, we don't have paddles in our hands. When we add paddles in our hands, we're stressing that tendon in a very, very unique way. Now this is often referred to as epicondylitis, meaning like a tendonitis and in inflammation, but very often it's actually a tendinopathy, meaning that tendon is actually degraded over time, almost like a worn out pair of shoelaces. That's bad news because it takes a lot more time to heal. So with a racket sport, that's really obvious why it would happen. When we're rock climbing, what happens is because you do finger holds, which are often isometric, loaded stretches of specific or a small pair of one or more of those six muscles, we're again loading that tendon in a very unusual fashion. As humans, we're designed to pick up things and maneuver things, but hanging from one or two fingers is a very uncommon way to load these muscles, these extensor muscles, and that tendon, especially when it's isometric, can get overloaded very quickly. So racket sports, rock climbing, a very common source of an injury, and the question is, how do we heal? If you go to a doctor, it's very common that you'll be offered a cortisone shot. Cortisone shot will immediately reduce pain and inflammation, but it's gonna do nothing to treat the underlying imbalance and can potentially make it worse. If at all possible, avoid cortisone shots. The second thing you'll start doing is taking ibuprofen and icing. This is amazing for pain relief, but it does nothing for healing. In order to heal that tendinopathy, that tendinitis, that inflammation, that degradation of the tissue, you really need to do a specific type of self-care routine that's designed to strengthen that tendon over time. Let's take a look. 
During the healing process, there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind. Firstly, remember, you're in this for the long haul. You really need to set your sights on months from now. What that means is little baby steps as you go. The second thing that's really important is you're honest about how things are going. Things need to either stay the same or get better or you're in trouble. What you're doing is not working. The way to establish that is to give yourself a quantified pain number on a scale of 1 to 10. Let's say that today your pain on a scale of 1 to 10 in that tennis elbow region, in that common extensor tendon, let's say that it's a 7. When you're above 5, I want you to be extra, extra conservative in your movements. And every day, I'd like you to do two things. Number one, mobilization. And number two, strength. This is really counterintuitive, especially the strength. So let's start with the mobilization first. You can use your racket if you're a racket sport player. I'll show you how to do it with a can as well. And I'd like you to brace your forearm. And essentially what we'll do here is just simply move our muscles through their range of motion. Remember that tendons are poorly vascularized. Sometimes parts of them are even avascular, meaning they don't have a great blood supply. So we need to move things around to clear out inflammation and to bring in new nutrients. So that's our goal, nothing more than to keep things moving and active. These muscles are very specific. They might not necessarily get activated during your day, especially when you're in a resting healing phase. So here's what I'll do. I'll brace my forearm and I'll extend my wrist. Two, three, these are very gentle movements. And then I'll flex my wrist. Three, two, one. I'll do some circumduction painting circles. So one, two, three clockwise, and then three, two, one clockwise. You can repeat that a few times. Let's imagine you don't have a racket or you're not out in the garage, you're in your kitchen or in the office or something. Maybe you can grab a can of beans. I'll show you the second set here. I'll brace my forearm and I'll extend my wrist to three and I'll flex my wrist three, two, one. I'll go in circles clockwise one, two, and three, and counterclockwise three, two, one, one to two minutes per day, just mobilizing, very, very gently mobilizing this region. We're at a seven out of 10. We wanna be extra conservative, which means our strengthening movements should probably start off isometrically. Isometric means hold. And so I'd like to tense those muscles, but hold the tension equally throughout the exercise and be very, very gentle. With tendons, they're very strange in their healing in that they actually need stress to heal up stronger. And there's a couple of different things happening. One is called mechanotransduction. And what this principle states is that when we stress this tendon just enough, it triggers cell growth and new fibers. The second principle is called collagen remodeling. So when your body lays down scar tissue, initially that scar tissue is really weak. And as the collagen is remodeled, it becomes stronger. And then you're not just pain free, but hopefully you're as strong or maybe even stronger than before. However, we can't go lifting weights on that damaged tissue. We need to be really gentle. So we'll start off with isometric holds for 30 seconds at a time. Let me show you what it looks like. Remember, these are extensor muscles, which means they contract by lifting my wrist, by extending my wrist up. But instead of lifting weights, I'll press my hand into the table as if I were trying to lift up the table, but I'll be really mindful not to put too much tension there, but you can see those extensor muscles are firing. I'll start my timer and I'll do sets of 30 seconds. I'm isometrically holding. Now, I'm assuming it's your dominant hand, your right arm in my case, but I would encourage you to do it with both arms just so you stay relatively balanced. For the sake of this demo, I'll do it just with my one hand, but you might as well do both so you keep your body balanced and avoid an injury on that other side as well. But what I'm doing here is contracting those extensor muscles. There's six of them. And I'm stressing gently that common extensor tendon. We'll release and shake it out. I'd like you to repeat that 30 seconds, four times per day. So this whole routine just takes a couple of minutes. Now let's imagine fast forward a month or two and you do the test again. Instead of seven of 10, let's say you're down to four or three out of 10, meaning things are working. You're moving in the right direction, but you still know if you're not careful, the pain could come back and it could come back worse. We will still start to do the same routine. We'll mobilize every day, but I'd like to increase your strength routine, 
not just with isometrics, but adding in eccentric movements. So concentric would be when those extensor muscles are shortening, when we're strengthening. Eccentric movements are when the muscles are lengthening, but we're also putting them under load at the same time. So it's essentially the way down. The best way to do this is with a exercise band, and you can use any kind of band that you might order online. You could even use a set of rubber bands that you might find in your kitchen. I have this under my foot, obviously. I'll brace my forearm. This is a lot harder than you think, but first I wanna brace, just like before, those extensor muscles fire up, and now I'll eccentrically lower down, three, two, one. I'll use my hand to lift back up because I don't want to work on the concentric, just the three, two, one, eccentric. I'll lift up, hold, three, two, one. I'll lift up, hold, three, two, one. One more time. Lift up, hold, it's harder than you think. Three, two, one, release, and shake it out. That was a set of five. I'd encourage you to do three sets of five per day. You should feel this right away. Now here's where you need to get honest. Our number needs to stay the same or go down throughout our practices. If you move from those isometric to the eccentric and it starts to trigger more pain, you back off and you go back to the isometric. Be patient. You're in this for the long haul. The bad news is it's a long journey. The good news is hopefully you'll heal up stronger than when you started. I hope you find this video helpful. If you'd like more science-based yoga videos, healing pain videos, click subscribe down below. Love to hear your comments, questions, and feedback down below if this video has been helpful for you. Lastly, you can find my teaching calendar at yogabody.com. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next video.